I will be speaking in English. I thought I was going to be sitting down talking, but when I saw Brother Afifi so lively and so dynamic, I have to stand up to be equally dynamic. You see, the questions that were put to us Pondok Modern and Pondok Aponi, Pondok Duo, old traditional Pondok. And the relevancy of the products of the Pondoks coming out of the Pondok system now, all over Malaysia, all over Southern Thailand, all over Indonesia, can they be employed? Will they have job? Will they have professions? And I think this is the question that all Pondoks in Nusantara, in Southeast Asia, are now facing. How to produce the best students? From the very beginning, the Pondoks were the cradles of Islam here in Southeast Asia. And you know what the word Pondok Ponok 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 come from? When the Kijai, when the Da'i from Yemen, from the Arab countries came to Southeast Asia, came to Aceh, came to Melaka, where did they stay? They stay in these ashrams, small hostels, you still have them here. And they started preaching, Nasihat. They start their da'wah. And the people would go to them to listen, to pray with them. And the neighbors would ask, where are you going? And they would say, we are going to the Fondok, we are going to the Fondok, we are going to the Fondok. Because that's where Islam was being taught in the very beginning when Islam came to Southeast Asia. So we adopted the word Fondok as the institution of learning for Muslims in Southeast Asia. Later on, Fondoks left the city, the urban area, and went into the forest, much like the ashram of the Rushis, of the Hindus, of the Buddhists, who were here before us. So that in itself, you could see the transformation of an institution which was exclusively Muslim, but transformed, adopted and adapted into the environment that was here in order to teach, in order to educate, in order to produce younger generation of Muslims into the future. So the, from the very, very beginning, Hondoks have always been the foundation, the bastion and the cradle of Islam. But the environment has changed. The world has changed. Oxford, for the last 800 years, changed with the world. Continue to expand the frontier of knowledge. Did not stop at only studying and teaching Taurat and Injil and the Bible. But from the very beginning, these colleges who were teaching, producing da'is to teach Christianity. But they change with time, they adapt and they adopted new science, new technology, new fields of knowledge. 38 colleges are 38 small pondok, 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 pondok. University of Oxford is only an umbrella taking care of all of them. So the difference between Oxford and us in Southern Thailand, and maybe us in Northern Malaysia, maybe us in Indonesia, is that these Pondoks at Cambridge and Oxford refuse to stop growing, expand. But maybe we in Southeast Asia 
When we don't agree on one thing, we can't work together on anything else. That's the difference. So what has changed the environment? You ask, how would the products of the Pondok go out there and be employed? You care about the market. You care about their employability. But you know too, the market has changed. In the past, all of us were living in Kampung, 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 working in the Padam, Padam, Padam. And that was enough. You, put, you stay with the Pondok, you stay with the Gurus for five years, for ten years, you go back home, you become the Imam. You become the Khatib. You become the Guru of the village. You become the Giyai of the Kampung. No more. How many Imams do you need for a village? How many Giyai do you need for a Kampung? There is an ayat in the Quran, Surah Al Jumak. فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ When you finish praying on Friday, you spread on the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and find Fadullah. In the past, you can have simple utensils, you can have simple tools. You go out to the field, and you take care of your rice field, or you take care of your fruits orchard, you come back, you survive, you have a profession. Now, to dip the gas and the oil deep in the ocean, Thailand and Malaysia has this joint development area, 7,000 square kilometers in the waters of the Gulf of Thailand, off the coast of Trangano and Kelantan. Do we have the knowledge? Do we have the science? Do we have the technology to reach down to the Fadlullah down there, five, six, seven kilometers down the water, down the crust of the earth, under the water? Do we have it from the Fadlullah? This is the question. It's from the Quran. فَإِذَا هَبُوذِيَ بِالصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ What utensils, what technology, what tools do we need in order to find Fadlullah deeper and deeper and deeper into, into the water, into the, into the land? So, I agree with Pa Afifi. The question of modernity and tradition is only a question that we imagine. And because of that imagination, we cannot see the way for the future. Modernity and tradition must be able to com be combined and survive and walk into the future together. You cannot ignore the Pondoks. We cannot stop the Pondoks from growing. We cannot ask the Guru to stop teaching in the Pondok because for a long, long time Islam and the Pondok have been one and the same from the very beginning here in Southeast Asia, here in Tanakh Melayu. But in order to be relevant, in order that our students will be finding a life of honor, life of dignity, life of practicality in the world out there which is changing every day, every minute, every hour, every second. We have to think about how to transform our curriculum, the way we teach, the way we educate, the way we produce them. So in Southern Thailand, this question of how to become relevant, how to become marketable for our, pro our products, our students. Pono Bantan, 72 years old, three years ago, we celebrated our 72nd anniversary. 
when Dr. Mahadev came to speak at our event. And we were searching and searching and searching what should be the model of the Pondok into the future. Particularly when ASEAN comes into being next year in Kuala Lumpur, when Malaysia is going to be in the chair of ASEAN. 600 million people will become one community. Half of that community will be Muslim. Over half will be speaking Malay. About half will be Muslim. How can the Pondoks and the Pondok system all over Southeast Asia, Pesantrian in Indonesia, Madrasah in Southern Philippines, Mahat Pondoks here, Ponok, 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 there is no Dal. Ponok, Ponok, D is out, Dal is out. Ponok, Ponok, Ponok in Southern Thailand. How are we going to prepare that half of ASEAN to join ASEAN, be prosperous with ASEAN, be dignified with the rest of ASEAN, or are we going to be left behind? That's the question. So we look and look and look and we found it in the Quran. Surah al -Kafi. When Musa was moving around, after he left Egypt, after he ran away from Fir'aun, with the knowledge of engineering, with the knowledge of architecture, with the knowledge of arithmetic, because he had to calculate, he had to build the pyramid, he had to dig up the canals, he had that knowledge. Human knowledge. But what he was missing and he knew it, Musa alayhi salam was wahi. He did not have it. So he said to his aide, Nabi Harun, in the movements around the Holy Land, Uts, Musa had this to say in Surah al -Kafi. Please open it up when you go back this evening. Musa said, La abrahu hatta ablugh majma' al -Bakrain. And there were interpretations that majma' al -Bakrain could mean where the Persian Sea Persian civilization, Iranian civilization, and the Arab civilization, and the Roman civilization met each other in the Dead Sea, in the Gulf of Aqaba. That's Majma al Bahrain. In fact, there is an island and a country called Bahrain now. Some said, no, it's the Mediterranean, where the Roman and the Arabs and the Persians and the Indians met each other. That's the two civilization, Majma al Bahrain. It was Al Baydawi who said, no, none of them is the correct interpretation. Majma al Bahrain means Wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One stream of knowledge, the other one is human knowledge which Musa alayhi salam already had in his mind, in his chest, because he was brought up in Egypt with the Pharaoh. So Majma al Bahrain became our motto. Much like at Oxford, Center for Islamic Studies, Oxford, for the first time in the history of 800 years of Oxford, an ayat from the Quran was put in the declaration establishing that center of Islamic studies, Oxford. You would be surprised what little ayats that they have chosen from this holy book. Very simple, very short. Rabbi 
زدني علما. So the charter that established the Center for Islamic Studies at Oxford for the first time in its 800 years plus history has the first ayat of the Quran in the hearts of that charter. Signed Queen Elizabeth II. So we look for the same inspiration and we found this Majma al Bahrain. We want our pondok and our pondoks in Thailand to be places of knowledge where the two streams of ilm converge. Majma al Bahrain. Because if we don't change, if we don't adopt new sciences, new technology, new innovation, we are going to be unemployed. We are going to be irrelevant. We are going to be leave, left behind in the new environment of ASEAN, 600 million people, 10 countries, here in East Asia, center of growth of the world today, but where would that half of the Muslim community who has the Kalim of Shahada in their hearts be in this new environment unless you have both the traditional Islamic training to ensure that the hearts and the brains and the mind are informed by Kalim of Shahada by ilm from here. Also to make sure that you have practical knowledge, employable knowledge, marketable knowledge when you leave the walls of the Pondoks.